right, so today's project is going to be to create a Fusion 360 sheet metal cone. Fusion 360 was originally designed to work with press brakes, so you have to know a couple tricks to be able to do this. I knew how to do it in the way that one knows how to change the oil filter on a 1974 Dodge Charger. Start with the sketch in the sheet metal environment, although that doesn't really matter, and I'm going to create the outside edge of that cone just as a line, just as a line, that's it. Now, I'm not going to dimension it. Your cone may be different sizes, but this will always work. The first thing I do is to create a, a very normal sheet metal flange. Note, I go in the negative direction, and I made this 10 millimeters, minus 10 millimeters long. You'll want to do the same thing. Um, don't go in the positive direction. Negative is a little bit better here. This will allow the system to recognize that this is a sheet metal part. It will get sheet metal um, rules like thickness and stuff like this and we'll use that later to trick this thing into thinking our cone is made on a press break. The very next thing you do is you go into the surface environment and you rotate that same sketch from before around the central axis and this is starting to look very cone-like. Um, you go all the way around 360 degrees. Note that this is a surface and not a body, it's a surface body, but it doesn't have a thickness yet. And the sheet metal flange is still a separate body, as it should be. Now, the next thing we will do is we will create a sketch on this central plane. The purpose of this sketch is to give us a rip, a small cut, so that our cone is not actually one entire part. We will do this before we thicken the cone because if we do it now and thicken afterwards, we will be able to make sure that all our thicknesses and our surfaces of the cut surface of the cut um, cone are actually perpendicular to their edges. This is important for sheet metal, as you can imagine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the flange that I just created in order to create my cut or better to say a rip in sheet metal terminology and I'm gonna give myself a little windage beyond the edges in this case 10 millimeters this is because as your cone gets very large or very steep um, just projecting that flange itself may not actually cut through the cone later in its entirety the last thing you want to do is have a very small gap between the outside edge of that flange and this cut, this rip. And in my case, I use 0.2. And you'll see later that that's actually not quite enough, but don't worry, it all works out in the end, and I'll explain why. Now, what we do now is we use that central sketch we just created, and I use the trim command to trim a bit of my cone surface out. So now I have a cone that doesn't go all the way around, it has a rip in the middle. And it's quite a bit larger than you'd want to see, but you can see right now there's still a gap and it's quite nice and this would work until we go in and thicken it up. Now, as we thicken it up, you'll need to adhere to your sheet metal rules and make sure that this thing is exactly the same thickness as your sheet metal flange from before. In my particular case, that comes from the rules. It's my, it's uh, 250 and it has to go in the same direction of course so in my particular case it's minus two, uh, 2.5 millimeters and when I do I'll say join so that joins this uh, sheet metal flange to this cone but as you can see I have an overlap here and that's going to be a problem because that's joined into one particular body if I go back and edit that flange and I make that flange very small you'll see that that works and this is exactly what we want people this flange is not a real flange. It is simply there to allow Fusion to be able to flatten it out. So we want it as small as possible. It should be well within the tolerances of your cutting and certainly well within the tolerances of anybody welding this up later. So this small little flange, which is incorrect and not quite right, is, a, is, is there, but it's so small that no one will ever notice it. And when you flatten, you can select that surface as the stationary edge, and you should be able to flatten just fine. You can export this as a DXF, and anybody can make it. Now, this should be all you need to know, and I hope it was helpful for you, and I do wish you good luck. <laughs>